At first, there was the facetious Trump derangement syndrome. But then we heard about something called Trump anxiety disorder, which actually is now getting some mainstream recognition. Trump derangement syndrome is more of a joke, right? When someone seems to irrationally hate the president, you you would imply they have derangement syndrome. But there are people who have now been, I don't know if it's an official diagnosis, but I was reading, there was an article about it, I made a video about it called Trump Anxiety Disorder, where people are actually getting anxiety from hearing news about Trump. Well, let me just say a few things. The media hypes up nonsense nonstop. Trump could, you know, kick a rock, walk out on the sidewalk, and they'd flip out and say Trump violently attacks, you know, whatever. And people will freak out because they're hearing this stuff. But Trump derangement syndrome, I think, you know, there's a lot of people who just are, they just hate the president and they can't really give you a real reason other than it's a cultural phenomenon. But apparently now, apparently now, we have post-Trump sex disorder. It's real, says a sex therapist. Big mean sexy daddy. Salon turns to Dr. Susan Block for answers to questions you didn't want to ask. And they ask here at good old Salon, has Trump wrecked your sex life? Let me just point out for those of us in the real world who aren't, uh, uh, Aziz Ansari, has, 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 they're calling it a comeback show, but he said, there are three groups of people. You've got the, the crazy fringe Trump supporter types who say Hillary did ISIS or something. You've got the ultra woke people who brag about not using gender neutral, ba- uh, not uh, only using gender ne- neutral bathrooms since 1986, and the rest of us who are terrified of these people. I think it's important to point out in his bit, there are regular Trump supporters who aren't the fringe screaming, you know, QAnon stuff. And then you have the you have normal left wing people who like social policy. You have people who are fans of Bernie Sanders who, shocker, are not advocating for weird intersectional identitarianism. There are a left and a right that are not insane. OK, it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. But let's read about post-Trump sex disorder. The point I was trying to make is us here in the real world, in that middle group, our sex lives are fine. Trump has nothing to do with it, nor does he does he impede or <laughs> increase the amount of love making. Donald Trump has made America's mental health crisis much worse. Beginning with his presidential campaign and through his third year as president, the United States has experienced an increase in anxiety, suicide, depression, and other mental health problems. Yes, but I blame the media. I blame the media. I hope when you watch my channel, you get the you get you get toned down. Life isn't that bad. Actually, no, I've talked about the coming civil war, so maybe I am responsible. The president of the United States is also a role model. He, is he? His or her behavior influences the public. And as, docu- and, and as documented by Dr. James Gilligan in his book, Why Some Politicians Are More Dangerous Than Others, Trump's assault on the country's mental health is part of a much lo- larger pattern. The Republican Party and the conservative movement have for decades advanced an agenda which has hurt the overall health and well-being of most Americans. Trump's negative impact on mental health extends to the intimate sexual lives of many people as well. What is post-traumatic Trump disorder? (laughs) What? That's a new one. That's a new one. How does Donald Trump's misogyny and other unhealthy behavior towards women reflect deeper systemic cultural problems in America around gender, sex, and intimacy? In an effort to answer these questions, I recently spoke with Dr. Susan Block. Dr. Susie is the founder and director of the Dr. Susan Block Institute for the Erotic Arts and Sciences. Block is perhaps most well known for HBO TV special Radio Sex TV with Dr. Susan Block. And uh, okay, we get it. I don't care about her repertoire. How has the age of Trump impacted the American people's collective mental health and also their intimate lives? It has had a big impact. For some people, Trump's campaign and presidency has created a type of PTSD, what I call post-Trump sex disorder. Trump has created feelings of fear, loathing, and nausea. People just don't want to have sex. I'm just going to point out, I wouldn't want to have sex with those people either. This would mainly be seen with women who are just appalled at how creepy Trump is. I will agree with that, though. I, I, am, I, am no, I think Trump is, is um, a bloviating, creepy old. He's old, man. He's lecherous. He takes what is often a positive male attribute of confidence and pushes it way over the line into a rape-like and rape-entitled kind of arrogance. I actually would, uh, I, I would, I, would I, I don't know if I would agree entirely with that statement, but I would probably lean towards that too. Like, you know, when the, when the tapes came out about the locker room talk with Trump and the grand by the pussy stuff, this is kind of, this is some of the stuff that leads me to not liking the man. Like Bernie Sanders is kind of, he's a mirror image to what Trump is. He's a left populist who is anything but overtly sexual, right? And perhaps that's a good thing. But the point is, 
Trump is, uh, I, I tried explaining this uh, in a video a long time ago, that whether or not, you, you might be someone who likes Trump, and that's fine, but you have to just understand, even if he doesn't invoke those feelings in you, there are a lot of people who don't like him because of the personality, because of the character, and because of the culture behind him. I think that's one of the biggest influencers in Trump derangement syndrome, that people can't point to. So look, conservatives are going to be like, I don't care what Trump said, like his character, how he sounds or, you know, what he does in his personal life. I want to talk about policy. Will he be effective? But the left doesn't look at policy. They look at character. So they see this lecherous old man who taught, you know, they don't like the way he talks. They don't like the way he looks. They don't like the way he sounds, and they don't like the things he does culturally. You know, he's like, uh, he's an image of the suave, smooth talking, take it, you know, grab a woman by the pussy kind of guy. And that triggers them. It does. And so they, ah, they foam with the mouth. And then they try to play it up because, listen, if you really want to be opposed to him as a president, you have to talk policy. You can't oppose someone, or, or I'm sorry, they, they, there's a, a, a cultural issue of, can you oppose someone if you don't understand what they're actually trying to implement? And because the left is triggered by his behavior and not policy, they conflate the two. And then you end up with people like, like Beto said, I will remove the border barriers. Like, oh, okay, hold on, man. I can understand if you don't want to build border walls because you think it's not worth the money. But what the hell are you talking about walls not working, being immoral, or wanting to remove the border barriers? That just doesn't make sense. It's complete and total nonsense. And they're doing this because they're triggered by Trump's character, right? But anyway, let's, 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 apparently this is what the doctor is saying. The news media is part of the problem as well. Hey, thank you. The news is full of stories about bad sex. They don't really like to talk about good sex. When you have this media obsession with bad sex, with the usual all American war worship and racism, as well as economic disparities and the way that corporations are in control, it really sucks the life out of a person. No, it, it means, <laughs> I wish Americans at least these ones were stronger people, you know, like I get, I get insults nonstop. I, I, I had, okay. I'm, and, and this is a shout out for the Chapo Trap House people, because I'm, I'm really sorry to announce this, but the if Chapo Trap House is like a left wing, like socialist kind of podcast, really big. And their Reddit used to tag me nonstop. They still do. And I think they're hilarious. I think they're, they genuinely are funny. And there's also a, 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 a shoot off called Toilet Paper USA, which mocks Turning Point USA, which I find very funny as well. And they would tag me in it. And so I would, uh, I reply to them and I think it's fun and funny, but I get, I started getting in an effort rogue and I started getting inundated with such insane attacks and insults and craziness that my phone wouldn't stop. Like people on Reddit are tagging me like crazy. So I just like, all right, you know, I, I had to deactivate notifications. So listen, I get this stuff all the time. Just shrug it off. Just brush it off the shoulder, man. It's like, come on, be an adult. Anyway, she says, with uh, never mind, um, never mind how this moment with Donald Trump is also reflected by many men who are dysfunctional and chronically frustrated and who don't know how to properly approach women and the lethally unhinged incels. We also cannot forget all of the ammo sexuals who substitute their favorite guns for a working penis. This is come on. Maybe this person's never fired a gun. I've only fired a gun, I think, on uh, one occasion in St. Louis during the Ferguson. We went to a range. And, uh, oh, no, 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 I, I did a training. I did a training in Jersey with the police. The police uh, police training facility taught me how to fire several different guns, all the way from, like, a really old school twenty two up to, um, I can't remember what the biggest one I used was, one, but it, wow, yeah, uh, handgun. It wasn't, a, uh, I think it was a forty five. So most Americans of conscience and decent people, more generally, are appalled by Donald Trump's personal and public behavior. Yet there are others who are aroused <laughs> by Donald Trump and see him as a symbol of sexual potency and power. My God, Salon, what the fuck? <laughs> Salon, for those of you who don't know, is a far left outlet. And what the? Listen, I can understand that people like Trump for his policy. You know, I did a brief little uh, uh, interview with Will Chamberlain on my main channel for the story about the Trump of the wall. And I, I assure you, there are a lot of like most of the Trump supporters I know are not prancing around talking about Trump's sexual potency and power. And, but, you know, may, maybe the Trump supporters like I, I, there's a can I. OK, I think there is a distinct difference between the tribal left and the tribal right that's not nothing to do with policy. And one of the big problems that I have is that my policy positions are uh, logically 
consistent with left, with social liberalism. But because the tribes are what defines someone's uh, where, where they're who they're going to vote for, you end up with people based on uh, character traits, behavior, not policy, which side they'll fall on. So you end up with people who are saying, you know, I'm going to vote pro-choice simply because Donald Trump is icky. You know what I mean? Like they don't actually know why they vote for the policy they do other than they don't like Trump. And, and that characteristic of them not liking Trump based on how Trump acts leads them to focus on Trump's sexual potency. Whereas most of the conservatives I know are just primarily concerned with what policies will have an impact on their jobs and manufacturing. And I, I know it's not absolute, right? I'm sure there are probably some Trump supporters who just <laughs> see Trump as a symbol of sexual potency, although I've never met them. Trump's what, 74 years old, 70, how old is he? 70 years old? How old is Trump? I don't know. I'm, I'm going too long on this. Donald Trump is a right wing authoritarian, authoritarian and aspiring tyrant. The fascist conception of the state is very masculine in the most crude and basic sense. In this way of thinking about politics and society, Donald Trump leads a political cult whose members want to literally be inside of him. Oh my God. I can't keep reading this. To become him, to have a libidinal relationship with the great leader. This includes both men and women. The fascist aesthetic can be very erotic. Oh my God. Oh my God. I just, uh, this is, this is wonderful. Listen, um, I am, I am probably what you'd call a sometimes, but usually not Trumper right? You have the never Trumpers. You have Ben Shapiro, who's a sometimes Trumper. And I'm a sometimes, but usually not. You know, um, I I like the idea of pulling out of uh, uh, Syria. I like the idea of getting away from foreign interventions. There are a lot of left-wing anti-interventionist Twitter users who I I, I agree with. Um, We we shouldn't get involved in Venezuela. I just don't like the idea that we, the U.S. does these things, plain and simple. War's bad. These deaths are bad, all that stuff. And so there are some things Trump does with like North Korea. I think it's fantastic. Uh, you know, if we can get peace in the peninsula, I'm really, really happy, especially someone with Korean heritage. I, I would really love to visit my, you know, great grandfather's uh, hometown. I've been to Seoul. It was, it was, it really meant something to me. It, it, it did. Um, but I got to say, whatever, th- you know what I'll do? I'm going too long. I don't want to go on too long on this, but I'll, but I'll mention one important point having to do with Jesse Smollett, the, 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 the MAGA country incident. Someone pointed out the reason they felt that was a hoax is because the in the story, these two guys attacked Jesse Smollett, yelled, this is MAGA country. And what they said was to a Trump supporter, MAGA means unifying all of Americans to make a better country. But to the left, it's a signifier of white supremacy and racism. So this, the idea that a Trump supporter would yell MAGA in that way while attacking someone is a left's caricature of a Trump supporter. I want you to look at this. The fascist conception of the state, Donald Trump leads a political cult whose members want to literally be inside of him. Are you implying male Trump supporters want to engage in, I'm not going to say it, I'm done. We're going to end this video right now, but God damn, this might be some of the most insane schizo, psycho, I'm, 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 we're going to end. Okay, we're too, stick around, I got one more video coming up in a few minutes.